All right, welcome to another video from the Outdoor Analyst. Boy, do I have a fun one for you today. This is going to be a classy, classy video because I have a classy, classy knife. I have uh, been on an interesting journey when it comes to blades of uh, trying to narrow down almost my entire collection and then really move into more either budget or just really special knives, um, which is just... I. I think that's kind of where the world's going these days. <laughs> Things are crazy expensive, so either have something that works and is a great beater tool, or get something really special. This is something very, very special. And there's only a few, well, there's only a few knives that uh, really come to mind when something like this comes out. This is a Jim Coffee custom knife. This is an old drop point hunter. And this is a beauty. Maybe I should have cleaned it up beforehand, but that's okay. I just got done doing some more feathers with it. Because uh, I was going to do a little uh, bonfire tonight. And, well, it's, it's going to be uh, fantastic. Uh, just because this thing feathers like a dream. Is it meant to be a, a, a woodworking knife? No, I don't think so. This is a hunting knife. And this is kind of one of his older pieces of work. This is a full custom and 1084. It's a about, oh, nine and a half inches long. A little over four inch blade. And this thing, I think it's a maple a uh, spalted maple, a uh, green, uh, something like that. Man, it is just beautiful. Nice stainless bolster. Uh, pretty thick on the spine, honestly, but it tapers down really, really nicely to a nice, what I now have on this is a convex. Almost everything Jim Coffee does is a uh, V-grind, but yeah, this has been convexed a lot by me. And it is beautiful, beautiful to use. And 1084, if anybody's never, it's a the customs knife makers use it all the time because of how easy it is to use. Think of it very similarly to, man, this used to have probably a good polished blade on it. Very similar to, to like a, a ADC RV2. Uh, pretty similar, super easy to use, fairly darn tough, um, but not a crazy amount of edge, edge retention. And that's totally fine. I for what it's what I'm using it for, just wood and animals. I mean, that, that's fantastic. But this thing is so so gorgeous and ergonomic, and it's old. This is I think is a at least a ten year old model, and man, it's just it just fits like an absolute glove. As soon as I I saw it, I just I knew this had to be the one. It's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. And it's hard to find. Um, a lot of people now think of like Pete Winkler from uh, Cross Knives. Very similar work. I would say very, very similar work when it comes down to it. I just like the design aspect of Jim Coffee, And he's not going to be making knives probably for that much longer. Like he's definitely in retirement age, which is fine. I'm sure he's still going to be putting out some cool pieces of art. But uh, they're going to be harder and harder to get a hold of. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to say, if you ever get a chance to get a piece of his work, it is amazing. I really enjoy this. I really enjoy the convex on it too. That has, it just feathers like a dream. It's probably going to be my backup hunting knife for all traded in and out between that Lon Humphrey Mully, Mully or Muley this year. The sheath's great. This was a, definitely an old sheath and I went and put another uh, coating of Obanoff's beeswax on there. So you can still see it's got a little bit of that white beeswax tint to it. The sheath has been really nice. It rides nice and low on the belt, considering how it's kind of designed. Would I love it if it was a drop point or a little drop loop on there? Absolutely. But it still sits pretty low on your waist. It doesn't stick up super high, so I don't mind that at all. But man, the ergos on this, that guard is just so freaking comfy. And man, do I respect that. I really respect that in a knife. It's a fairly thick handle for a fairly thick hidden tang knife. And daggone, this thing is just butter. Super comfy, super ergonomic. I thought the bird's beak may be a bit of an issue. Um, it actually lines you up for an incredible uh, chopping grip back here. Um, am I ever going to use this thing to chop? Goodness, no, it's way too small for that. It's a four freaking, you know, inch blade. That reverse grip works really, really well. And I'm not a lefty, but you know, the camera angles <laughs> just makes being a lefty on the camera a little easier. So this thing is just amazing. What do you get when you get like a full custom versus, let's say like a production semi-custom? So this, we're gonna go hunting knife to hunting knife. This is a Bark River 
uh, Gunny Hunter and 154 CM or CPM 154. Still a great knife. Fairly similar in profile. Blade wise, it's just maybe a hair bit smaller, not nearly as tall. Handle wise, though, this thing is way, way, way smaller. And it's a little bit lighter. And it has a little jimping up there. Still super comfy for animals. Very, very light in the hand. Uh, very ergonomic. Can definitely do bushcraft work. Absolutely. Um, this one being a much larger handle, a little bit heavier, so much more comfortable doing it. Honestly, this is a much more ergonomic knife all around, but it's, it's, it's heavier. So when it comes to animal processing, it's not as nimble um, or just maybe responsive might be the, the term. It doesn't feel as responsive as, as this. Like I know I can just laser surgeon with this thing. Can I do the same thing with this? Yeah, but it's a little bit bigger, a little bit slower, a little bit more clunky. Just because it's a larger knife. Do I mind that? Not really, but I want to do squirrels with this knife. I would rather do it with the Gunny Hunter, honestly, just because it's a much smaller knife and you know, you're just doing tiny little things and it's super fast pants and a squirrel, but still, smaller blade definitely would, would work a little better. Uh, fit and finish on this thing, uh, pretty immaculate. This thing's old, absolutely old, and immaculate fit and finish on it. The bolster, I think that's what this thing's called. Um, perfection, uh, pretty much perfection. I've almost never seen a good one on a Park River knife. There's always massive gaps everywhere. Uh, and this thing, even over years and years and years, has done incredibly, incredibly well. Which is probably why I love this thing so much. It's it's not a new knife. This thing's old and ah, it's, it's just it's gorgeous. These are wonderful hunting knives. Love them to death. I think there's been way more attention to detail done on the custom versus the semi-custom. Um, and what does that really matter in the long run when most people are saying, well, of course it's going to be more attention to detail. Well, sometimes it's not. Sometimes on customs, you don't get that much attention. And people just, you know, because they have a name, they throw it out there and say, oh, it's great. Yeehaw. And then they kind of cover up their flaws. Cost-wise, too, usually you'd say the custom costs twice as much as a, you know, a semi-production knife. Yeah, these were about the same, actually. Uh, for what these came down to, I have, I have a few Jim Coffees now. This is probably my favorite. But this is also not more expensive uh, to get a hold of. Now, nowadays, it might be a little bit more uh, difficult to get a hold of them. But I gotta say, if you get a if you get a chance at it, or even someone like you know uh, Pete Winkler on on cross knives, very very similar, just different design. Uh, def definitely different design. Oh, man, what am I trying to even say there? There's aesthetics, uh, maybe definitely definitely different aesthetics to them. Uh, definitely different ergos, but goodness gracious. This is freaking awesome. I have really enjoyed this for woodworking so far. I hope to bag a deer with this. Still putting a lawn humpery in front of it deer wise, but this is gonna be an awesome knife for this year. It has been so far. It's been just a pleasure to use around the property and around the house just for little work. Um, yeah, even, you know, cutting up uh, venison today, which was great. Yeah, definitely gotta jump into the freezer and get the good stuff out there, get all that what's left of the silver skin oh man this still has a nice nice like hair popping edge off and, and you know i just did quite a bit of woodwork with this thing I, not bad for 1084 not bad at all and because it is very similar to like you know 80 crv it, it holds a pretty good edge honestly not too shabby for being so tough um and i put a good amount of uh oh what did i put on this a good covering coating on the on the blade just to Make sure it wouldn't have any issues with rust where I'm at. Because I'm in the Midwest, and you, you better believe it's always wet around here. Always humid, always wet. Gotta be, gotta be uh, on top of your knife game for that, that's for sure. But no issues so far. No patina on there either. That was a good, good coating. Mm -mm. Man, this thing's just lovely. Just lovely. Now, normally there's a mirror edge on here, but I convexed it quite a bit. So I think I took a lot of that mirror off, um, which is totally fine. I don't really care to have mirror edges on stuff. I just want it to be efficient and effective, and that's that's all I'm really looking for. Dang, I love this knife. Okay, I, that was just pretty much a quick review, just saying, hey, if you can find anything from Jim Coffee, uh, go for it. Uh, 
beautiful work. As long as you like the, the, the design, the ergos, everything about that, I mean, ergonomically, this guy just, just nails it. Just nails it. I'll, I'll show another piece of his at some point, and it's just ergonomically incredibly as well. It's just such a good good piece of work. I hope he uh, keeps going to blade shows and keeps dropping off knives at the table, making amazing work. Because, dang, his design language is just out of this world. Just a, just a beauty. Oof. Ooh, 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 ooh. Man, something special. Something definitely special. Does everybody need a custom knife? No. Well, a semi-production knife or a semi... I'm not... Nah. We'll go semi-custom. This is really just production. We'll just do absolutely everything this knife will. Yeah. Totally, uh, especially if this was like a Bravo one. But granted, I like, you know, these are technically hunting knives, so I really do like the drop point. I really do enjoy that on these for sure. But goodness gracious, these are just fan-freaking-tastic. And I gotta say, if you can get something special, it is worth it to get something a little special. Is the steel technically on the Bark River way better? Yeah, technically, absolutely. CPM 154 will dominate uh, 1084 in almost every way. I think this is still technically a little tougher, but it's not stainless. Doesn't have, uh, you know, that crazy edge retention, which is, this isn't crazy. It's still pretty tough. It's a, it's a good balance steel. But my goodness, is it worth it to have kind of that next level know that this was all hand done? And not just hand done, but by someone who really does appreciate the finer details of making sure everything is lined up. All the grinds are just perfection on this knife. Like, per freaking fection. I appreciate that so much. Especially when these, in the end, cost the same thing for me to acquire, uh, basically. Yes, please. Um, any day of the week. <laughs> Give me the custom. Give me the custom. Okay, well, anyway, hope this was a was a fun conversation. I have really enjoyed this knife. I can't wait to keep using it, putting more history and work on it for myself. I feel like I'd go fancy, so, you know, leather watch today. Leather band on there. Gotta love it a little bit. But goodness gracious, if you ever, ever get a chance, please, uh, you know, just do yourself a favor. Pick up a Jim Coffee. Customs are sweet, man. They really are sweet. And this thing is, oof, oh, so sweet. Mm-mm-mm. All right, hey, if you like this video, like, subscribe. I would appreciate it. Definitely helps out the channel. I'll be showing this puppy as it gets another batch of linseed oil soon enough here on the channel. I have a lot of work before I put this hatchet to test versus my grand first. Um, we'll definitely show the differences and how this works versus it. Maybe it won't be as good. We'll see. I have a, you know, 10 plus years on that one, so I don't want to rush into any sort of reviews on this. But... This should get nice and a little bit darker. This just soaked up that last coating of linseed oil from last week. Oof, goodness gracious. Okay, sorry. I'm on a... I keep just raving on. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next one.